Hello everyone, uh, we're back again uh, to uh, present uh, another uh, webinar in our series. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all. This uh, episode is going to involve uh, Orford Mining. My name is Jacob Willoughby. I'm a Vice President of Research here at Red Cloud Securities. And joining me in person is uh, David Christie, who is uh, President and CEO of Orford Mining. Uh, before we begin, um, we'll of course cover the disclosures. Uh, David will, after that, uh, give us a presentation about the company. Uh, then we can take questions uh, from participants online or just uh, discuss between David and I some of the uh, questions uh, that uh, we have from Red Cloud. Uh, so for Orford Mining, there may be some forward-looking statements made during this presentation, and I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the company's corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud, please see the full disclaimer on disclosures on our website, and I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. Also, we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Red Cloud specific disclosures related to Orford are the following. In the last 12 months, Red Cloud Securities has been retained under a service or advisory agreement by the subject issuer. In the last 12 months, Red Cloud Securities has received compensation for investment banking services by the issuer. A member of Red Cloud Securities has visited uh, material operations of the issuer and Red Cloud Securities or a member of Red Cloud Securities team or household has a long position in the shares and or options of the issuer. With that said, we can get going now and I'm very happy to introduce uh, David Christie, uh, who's going to tell us all about Orford Mining. Thank you, Jacob. Good afternoon, everyone. Orford Mining is a relatively new company that began trading in October 2017 when we took the company public. Prior to that, it was a private company which had been exploring for nickel in the Cape Smith Belt of, uh, on the West Raglan Project since 2012. In 2015, the company acquired a very large property position to the north of uh, the West Raglan Project that we believe is very prospective for gold. And since we have discovered a number of uh, high-grade gold showings along this belt, and that gold project, project is the focus of the company and the focus of this talk. Next slide. As Jacob said, I'll be making some forward-looking statements. I'll let you read that at your leisure. Next slide. There are a few key takeaways I'd like you to make from this presentation. First, Orford completed two financings this past spring, raising $4.6 million in what was a very difficult mining market, financing market for mining companies. We only had a $10 million market cap and raised $4.6 million. Second, Alamos Gold became a, very, a strategic investor in the company with a 22.2% stake as part of those financings. Third thing I'd like you to remember, Kigabic Project is in Northern Quebec. It's very large, 348 square kilometers, which is more than six times the size of Manhattan. On this pro property, we have identified what we believe is a new gold belt in Canada focused on along more than 40 kilometers strike of the Kigabic break, and we've discovered more than 11 high-grade gold showings across the project. In 2019, we completed a multi-discipline project, geophysics, geology, geochemistry, and diamond drilling. Drilling was successful intersecting gold in all six drill holes completed in, different, in three different geological structures, two of which were tested for the very first time. The team was also successful in making a number of high-grade gold discoveries at surface. And fourth, we also own the, the high-grade West Raglan project, uh, which is a copper-nickel project, very similar grades to uh, the Raglan mine, which is a world-class uh, nickel mine, about 90 kilometers to the east of us. It's a 470-square-kilometer project, so it's even bigger than Kigavik. And we are currently seeking a JV pr uh, partner on this project. And lastly, uh, we operate in Quebec, which is consistently ranked one of the best in the world for mining investment attractiveness. Next slide. This slide gives you an idea of our management team. Uh, it's a very experienced team. First, a little brief history on myself. I was a mining, I've been in the mining industry for over 33 years. 
I was a geologist for about 15 years after that. I became a mining analyst for a TD in Scotia. Following that, I am helped manage money at uh, Dundee Corp, uh, both on the investment fund side and uh, more on the private equity side. During my stay at Dundee, I became CEO of a company called Eagle Hill Exploration. That company is the foundation of what is today's Cisco Mining. Uh, we took four companies, merged them together to create what is today's Cisco Mining. We share a number of management personnel with RNC Minerals uh, through a services agreement. Uh, this helps keep our costs very low, and we get access to a very experienced uh, technical and financial people. Alger St. John is our VP of Exploration. He's the same for RNC, and has been in the industry for over 25 years. Uh, ex experienced uh, geologist and on discoveries of both the Beta Hunt and uh, the Dumont Project in Quebec. Michelle Sarantino has been a, a driving force on our KBIP project for the past number of years and has been with RNC uh, for well over 10 years. We recently added two new board members to our board in the past year, Ben Pullinger from Exelon uh, Resources and Peter McPhail from Alamos Gold. We've also set up a exploration committee with the Alamos team as part of our new their new investment in the company. So we have a team of Alamos people and uh, or for people that sit down a few times a year and go over ideas on how to explore our projects properly. Next slide. Our valuation has seen some pressure recently. What I think is it created a great buying opportunity. Upcoming catalysts include the remainder of our results from Kigavik, a potential deal on our West Raglan project, and acquiring another gold project in the Abitibi to offset the seasonal work at Kigavik in the Quebec's far north. We are currently reviewing a, a large number of projects for that potential purchase. We continue to believe we've discovered a new gold belt with massive potential for gold discovery. Also note in the footnote at the end of the last quarter, uh, we finished raising a, a, the second portion of $4.6 million after the end. So the cash balance there changed after the end of the second quarter. Our Q3 results will come out later this week. As I said, Kikibik is in the far northern part of Quebec, as you can see on this map. The volcanic and sedimentary package has a key through-going structure that we believe is closely associated with the gold mineralization on the project, much in the way the Cadillac break is in the Abitibi. The 2019 drill program is successful intersecting a 53-meter uh, gold intersection along uh, the interlake uh, structure, as well as gold mineralization on newly discovered IP shear zone and the focused intrusion. Hitting gold intercepts in all six drill holes. This drill holes were spaced by 18 kilometers, so this is really prospecting with the drill at this point, and we're still being successful. We are currently, we have also been successful making a large number of uh, high-grade surface discoveries with visible gold train, visible gold boulder trains pointing towards areas along the IP Lake Shear, and I'll talk more about that as we go through this presentation. Something to keep in mind is this: we've only spent 21 weeks of work and a few very short field seasons on this project, so it's very early days. The Western Arctic, as you see on this map here, has been successful in discovering and, and building new gold mines. So you have Meadowbank, Hope Bay, and, and Meliodine. That area of the world had gold exploration going on from the late 70s all through the 80s and early 90s before gold operations really started being discovered. Our part of the Arctic, no one's really explored this part of the Arctic until we got here. So it's very new, uh, very open, and has a huge amount of potential. Next slide. As you see in this map, the southern half of the, of the Cape Smith Belt, which is that band of colored rocks you see on the map, um, is very prospective for nickel, the dark green colors. That's where our West Raglan project is. North of that green line there is the area that we believe is prospective for gold exploration. This is the same belt of rocks that goes down through into Manitoba, for Snow Lake Manitoba, which has been prolific for various different metals, including gold, and down into the... Uh, the Labrador Trough. So it's a prospective belt of rocks. It's just had very little gold exploration in this area. It's got the same age and tectonic setting as belts such as uh, Flin Flon, as I mentioned, uh, the Ashanti Gold Belt in West Africa, which is one of the most prolific belts in the world, the Tanami Belt in uh, Western Australia, and the Parama Belt in Brazil. So these are, this is good company to be in. We continue to believe that we have the potential to discover uh, multiple deposits in this project. As I mentioned, this map gives you a better idea how it's the same belt. So Cape Smith comes down through into Manitoba there and into the uh, Labrador Iron Trough. So lots of metal in this in this belt in different areas, just no exploration in this part of the belt for anything but nickel. So looking at this slide, this gives you a, uh, a quick view of what has happened on this project. So the reason we got involved in this property originally was in 1996, 
Falconbridge uh, drilled two drill holes. They're in that red box you see on the map, the two yellow drill holes. They had three grams over 10 meters. Um, we liked what we saw on those rocks. The alteration was interesting. We looked a little more at the rest of the project and got excited and, and staked some more, some more land, a huge amount of more land. Um, there really had been no other exploration on this project other than a bit of geochem at surface. So we've done a lot of work since then. You can see across the here, this is the drill holes we've drilled and the success we've had in them. So there, there's gold in almost all these drill holes as we move across the project. And that's more than 40 kilometers end to end. So this is exciting. Uh, it's new and there's a lot of work to be done here. There's been no 40 years of exploration as we've seen in most places in the Abitibi. This slide just gives you a snapshot of the work we've actually done, the stats on it, including this year's multidiscipline project. I remind you again, 21 weeks of work on the ground since 2016 when we started working here in earnest. So not a lot of time, uh, lots more to do. This map here is why I got excited and why we've been excited about this project since the beginning. Keep in mind the scale of this map. Remember, it's more than 40 kilometers end to end. It's 350 square kilometers across. Um, these results are all at surface. These are all high grade numbers, uh, up to over 600 grams in, in a sample this summer, uh, 450 grams, uh, 13 grams, 31. Like these are big numbers. You know, in most projects, you might find a couple showings, you know, maybe a couple 10 gram showings that you, you spend some time on. But this project has showings across the entire map that you're looking at. And a lot of them have VG, visible gold, in the rocks that we're sampling. So this is exciting stuff uh, and highly unusual in, in my view from my experience. In 2019, we decided to concentrate our efforts on only two areas. We have a lot of targets on the project, but we decided to concentrate uh, the Esperance area in the west, which I'll talk more about, but it's a copper uh, gold area with a strike extent of five kilometers. We're getting up to six and a half grams combined copper gold there in drill holes. And then the interlake, uh, IP lake, central part of the project. Those two yellow boxes you see there are where we flew an airborne VLM, VLEM survey to help us understand the conductive units that are on the, on the property. And that was quite useful in our targeting this year. When we look at what, we've, what we did this year, we were successful in intersecting gold in all our drill holes, as I mentioned, over an 80 kilometer strike. We extended the, the gold mineralization at Interlake uh, to two and a half kilometers of the five kilometer structure um, with up to 53 meters of 0.51 grams. So lots of low grade mineralization over quite a long strike length. If you're sitting down in the Abitibi, you'd probably drill this uh, a lot to see if you could outline a deposit. Up here, we need a little higher grade. We confirmed gold mineralization and drilling associated with a, a, a multiple quartz veins and a felsic intrusive body at the focused intrusion. Uh, this is quite exciting. We basically, I'll tell you more about it in a minute, but we basically drilled a hole in the middle of it to see if what it had. Uh, we confirmed gold and drilling at, along the IP Lake Shear, which is a 10 kilometer, or seven kilometers that we can see, but we think it goes at well more than 10 kilometers. Um, so 10 meters of 0.58 grams. So there's definitely gold in all these systems. And we've discovered multiple gold mineralization uh, boulder trains that lead to different spots along that IP Lake Shear. And I think this is the key target for 2020, and we'll talk more about that. And we've discovered a new high grade showing to the south of Esperance that is over 20 grams. The Interlake area continues to return thick packages of lower grade continuous gold mineralization with strong alteration and deformation over a three kilometer strike. You can look at that. There's a hole there, number one, all the way to hole number five. That's almost three kilometers, and we're getting mineralization in all those holes uh, up to 53 meters thick. So there's, there's definitely something going on here. Like I said, these holes are still very widely spaced, so lots of work to do here. At Interlake, we, we believe the western portion of the structure still has the best potential. Uh, there's some good cross structures there, and we get good up ice uh, boulder trains, that which high grade mineralization, with high grade mineralization in them. Those will be tested in 2020. This just gives you a better look at Interlake. The Interlake drilling intersected thick sections of volcanoclastics and mineralization consisting of pyrite, pyrotite, cephalorite, and arsenopyrite. Those are the type of sulfide minerals we had in them, along with very strong alteration, including a quartz and sericite alteration. We believe the western portion, as I mentioned, you can see on this map, there's a conductor that runs through the western lake there, and there's some structures that are cross-cutting uh, the main shear zone, and that's where we're gonna look at and focus our efforts on Interlake next year. 
But perhaps what we're most excited about is, is the new IP Lake Shear Zone. This is a new structure. It's over 100 meters thick. It's a, a strong shear with quartz carbonate, sericite, and fuchsite alteration. These are key minerals in most gold, gold, uh, gold mines in the world that are on shear zones, such as the, you know, along the Abitibi uh, in the Cadillac break. Uh, we have some strong gold and till dispersion trains. You can see the numbers next to the, uh, the X's to the north of the shear zone. Uh, these are gold numbers that are in till samples we've taken, and they're pointing towards structures along that, uh, that fault. The X's with no numbers next to them, those are samples we've taken and don't have the results back yet. So we've done more detailed work along the structure uh, to see if we can define those gold and till numbers a little better for next year. Backing up that those gold and till numbers, we have three distinct boulder, uh, gold and boulder trains. You can see them here with the, the red arrows, you know, up to 600 grams in, in surface samples, uh, with large quartz saltered boulders uh, with visible gold in them. These are very important and exciting discoveries that we think point to uh, what we believe will be disruption along the shear zone. You can see some major structures along there where the magnetics, that's the red coloring you see there, has been disrupted and turned sort of yellow. Uh, these are areas where we think there's been disruption and that's where the potential for the most gold enrichment is along those structures. Uh, switching gears, we drilled one hole this year into a thing called the focused intrusion. Uh, this is an intrusion, sits at the top of a hill. It's basically covered in boulders. Uh, we call the area Mordor, sort of like the Lord of the Rings area. Um, Lots of high grade numbers at surface, not a lot of sulfide mineralization anywhere. And we drilled one hole basically in the center of it in a conductor to see what basically we could see. Flipping to the next slide. Uh, we basically had gold mineralization from the beginning of the hole to almost the end of the hole, uh, up to eight and a half grams of gold in one of the samples. So there's obviously gold mineralization here. Next year, we'd like to go into this area, map the entire intrusion, see where we can find a higher intensity of quartz veining uh, and that's like where, likely where we're going to have some more economic intersections and better thicknesses. I mentioned Esperance at the very beginning. This is at the far western side of our project. This was the discovery we made in 2017. This year we flew a, VLE, a VLEM survey over this area uh, to see if we can identify better structure, uh, structural continuity of the conductors. It works quite well. Uh, you can see on this map here, there's a lot of gold and copper over five kilometers. So there's lots of mineralization here. Uh, and the, the table gives you an idea of what we hit. It was up to six and a half grams combined. On the next map is basically the modeling of this conductor and only looking at the highest uh, chargeable points in this conductor. And you can see there's a number of them here where we did not intersect uh, the best part of them or any of the conductor with our drilling. So we're gonna to continue to model these over the winter and see if we can define some really good drill holes to drill next year for potentially thicker, uh, more mineralized conductive portions of this trend. Uh, we have a great relationship with the local communities. We work hard to maintain that. Uh, and this year we spent about the same and employed about the same number of people as we did last year and the year before. So when we take things away from this year's project, uh, we discovered a strike extensive mineralized system possible with uh, zones of dilation on both Interlake and at uh, IP Lake. We intersect gold mineralization in all our drill holes and they're spaced by quite a large separation of 18 kilometers. Confirmed gold mineralization and drilling associated with multiple quartz veins in the Felsic intrusion. So we're gonna look for more quartz veining there. And we confirmed that gold along the IP Lake shear zone. And with and we have a large number of targets along that same shear zone because of uh, dispersion trains. And Esperance has more life in it because we've now identified conductors that have not been drilled that are quite large. We continue to have a lot of, a lot of untested targets. Uh, this is very early stages camp. It has similar potential to the Abitibi in the early 1900s. Uh, deposits are, are here to be found and we believe that strongly. Flipping to, uh, to the last thing here, West Ragland project. We are currently working on a, getting a JV partner for this uh, very prospective project. It's one of the few nickel sulfide projects in the world that's ready to be drilled. Uh, we've made a large number of discoveries on this project. They have very similar grades to the, to the Ragland grades that you see here on this page. If you turn the page, you can see the grades of some of the uh, discoveries we have made on here. You know, 3.21% nickel, 1.32% copper, and 2.78% palladium. That's at the frontier zone. 
So we believe there's a large number of uh, discoveries to may be made here yet. Those are that's only the beginning. And so we, we have, we're looking for a partner to come here and uh, work on this project with us. Switching to the next page. Now, this is a comp table that was prepared. And it just gives you an idea of other uh, area plays that are in Canada and, and mostly Finland. Uh, projects that are large, uh, lots of potential, uh, but earlier stage. And it shows the market cap disparity between these large projects and, and ours. Uh, you know, we currently have a nearly $5 million market cap, uh, and most of these guys are well over a $20 million market cap. So I think there, there's a valuation disparity here, and we think we'll close it soon, especially if we can get the West Raglan deal dealt. So to sum up Orford Mining, we have strong support through new strategic uh, shareholder with Alamos Gold holding 22%. We still have support from Dundee and RNC. Those are our two uh, founding shareholders. We have massive land position that we believe is a new gold district in Northern Quebec and remains underexplored. The gold discoveries on the property point to the potential of a multi-million ounce deposits to be discovered. Working in Quebec, uh, which is a safe and supportive mining jurisdiction is a privilege. We are fully funded uh, the program in 2019 and we're working towards a funding a program for 2020. Uh, Orford is also actively searching for a second project to, off, off, to help offset that Arctic exposure we have with more news over the winter. And that's it. I think we'll turn it over to questions. Okay, thank you, David. Um, I think, uh, firstly, um, could you tell us some more about what the uh, upcoming news flow is? There's a lot of uh, surface samples and drill core that uh, assays haven't been released yet, so could you outline what that is for us? So uh, all of drill core actually has been released. So we've got the drill results from all six drill holes, um, but we haven't got any of the uh, the whole rock analysis or the till sampling results back for all our samples that were done at the end of the summer. So, and as I mentioned, the IP Lake, those till samples are gonna be the key source of driving target selection for 2020. And, and that was several hundred samples in total? Yeah, it's uh, well over 200 samples. Well so. over 200. Yeah. And are they they're focused in the two areas of Esperance and the IP Lake Shear corridor? Or Well, I think most of the samples that we're waiting for are from the, along the IP Lake, that seven-kilometer structure. Mm -hmm. And so you would release them in a comprehensive package? Where yeah, we'll release them when we have them all, and we can interpret them and give you an idea of what we think about them. Right. And my view is that when we go back in next year, we'll have to do more sampling as well in that same area to maybe even close those off better. Okay. I think we uh, have a question from uh, somebody online here wondering if uh, you intend to register Orford on the OTC US market uh, in the future. Yeah, so we've started to look at that and that, that is something that we will likely do. Good. Um, other questions, um, um, perhaps you could, uh, you know, elaborate on, on how much work have you've done versus how much time you've actually had on the ground there. You've mentioned 21 weeks of, uh, of field season, basically. Yeah, 21 weeks of field season, but that's, so that's about a little over 5,000 meters of drilling, including the two Falkenberg holes on the property. So remember, it's a huge project, so over 40 kilometers long, and we drilled just a little over 5,000 meters. Um, lots of other field work, uh, till samples, uh, thousands of samples. Uh, there was a slide there that gave all the numbers. Um, but a, a lot of till sample results, frost boil samples and, and grab samples, um, but only 21 weeks of work. So when we go in, we go in with, you know, 40 people and we work really hard for a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be great if we could sp spread it over a year, but to, we can't do that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, once we have a, a center of gravity there, like we have a deposit we want to drill off, then we could drill all year long. But until we have that, we we got to see the rocks, so we can only drill in the you know the few months we get that there's no snow. Right. Now you mentioned some of the deposits in the territories in the the far north, Meadowbank, uh, Hope Bay, Medialine, which some of them you have experience actually doing exploration in. Yep. Um, do you do you use a lot of the techniques that you used um, for hunting down gold deposits there on on this this project in Quebec? Well, I think the, the things that you use here consistently are, are those regional things you learned when you had a big package of land. So you're doing basic exploration and not 
uh, overlooking anything. So you're looking for any type of mineralization. Don't try to build your model too quickly. Uh, typically when geologists go in with one specific model in mind, they miss every other model. So we're going in with our, our minds open, looking for many potential deposits. And I, as you move across our project, we have the copper gold in the West, you know, to uh, shear zone and then you know, felsic intrusion uh, gold. So there's a lot of different uh, metal environments as you move across the project. And yeah, that's why you have to keep things open. You have to do very good regional exploration, step-by-step -step exploration and build your layers of data. Mm -hmm. So when you first came to join Orford or when you were with Orford and, and you made the decision to, to, uh, to move up into this project, was it, you know, the, the sort of sheer enormity and, and the, the virgin kind of nature of the ground that attracted you to the opportunity? Yeah, I think, well, it was our initial results. So we're getting high grade gold and, you know, and both at surface and in boulders and until, and that's highly unusual in my view. Um, and the fact that no one's ever explored this piece of property for it before, and we had so much of it to explore. So I think the potential here is quite large. And I think that's something that people don't realize, uh, that there is under ex unexplored areas in Canada still uh, that no one has ever touched. Mm -hmm. For, for next year's program, uh, I mean, it's all subject to your, your budgeting, uh, depending on financing, but for your next steps, do you think that, uh, you know, you can get more information from uh, doing geophysical surveying or more surface uh, frost boil and soil sampling. So I think it's going to be two pronged this coming year. We're going to we're going to do a lot of reprocessing of geophysics we've done because we've done a lot of geophysics. So this winter we're going to take selected areas. We're going to look at the IP Lake area and level it just to that area and, and sort of process it to understand that specific area. So we'll do a lot of that this winter, and that's that's cheap stuff. Uh, and then next summer, we'll go in and fine tune more with more for us, oil sampling and mapping. I think we're going to do a lot more geology, even if it, we don't have a lot of great outcrops, like good surface exposure, but we have a lot of boulders. So we're going to map those boulders like they're real mm -hmm. and just see what we can understand about the geology that way. Yeah. Um, and then, so it's going to be a step-by-step -step process. Just like I said, everything has to be step-by-step -step here. Um, and if we can build targets based on that, then we'll drill holes next year. It looks like we have a, another question from online uh, asking um, what kind of funding do you think you need to uh, begin mining if you reach that goal uh, when, when you see yourself, um, you know, up and running, if that were to be the case? Uh, yeah, that's that's a difficult thing to say because, you know, we don't have a deposit yet. So how big the deposit is will dictate how much money you, ha you need to have. Um, you know, if it's a, a nice gold deposit where you're just producing dory, it's fairly cheap. If you're producing a concentrate, everything changes. So um, I, I'd hesitate to guess how much money we, we would need, but you can easily go look at uh, Agnico Eagles, Meadow Bank, or Malaydine to see what, you know, building a gold mine in the far north costs. Mm -hmm. And a, a sort of follow-up question asking about the balance sheet, does the company have any debt at all? No, no debt. We're a junior mining company. We'll keep the balance sheet as clean as possible. Right. And of course, uh, your your flow through eligible and uh, Quebec has its own uh, specific type of flow through that you can take advantage of as well. That's right. So we can uh, do super flow through in Quebec and, uh, and and of course, national class flow through as well. But uh, so you get a better premium in, in Quebec. Mm -hmm. And even when you spend hard dollars, Quebec, the Quebec government gives you a rebate on the hard dollars. So. Right. Uh, maybe just quickly, you could uh, describe for people what exactly we mean by a frost boil, because if you haven't done exploration yeah, okay. in the territories, you might not understand exactly what that is. So a, a frost boil is basically the way we sample till there because we're in permafrost. So frost boils are like uh, convection cells. It's sort of like when your coffee cools, you get those lines if you use cream at the top of your coffee. Uh, so the coffee's cool, the, the sediment's cooling, and it sort of circulates. And uh, we take samples of that dirt in these, they're like little octagonal shaped uh, uh, sediments at the top of the surface and we take a sample of that and it tells us you know what's near the bedrock interface you know where the sediment hits the bedrock yeah you can you can sort of get an image of it looking at the the first page of the presentation there from uh, from the air yeah the, uh, circular nature that you see there it's, it's yeah. interesting uh, uh, I hadn't seen very much of it before I was up to the to the site in uh, in August when we were there but uh, it's uh, it's a huge country uh, you know, it's it's only really air accessible for now, but uh, it's 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 easy to get around and move things around because. Uh, well, the thing to remember, just to the east of us, ninety kilometers, there's two massive nickel mines that are 
you know, the Raglan deposits, world class. They produce, you know, all their copper and nickel basically for free. The platinum palladium pays for it. So these are world class deposits, not very far away, and they're operating in the same area. And they're expensive ones because they had to, uh, they have concentrates. So they have to build a port, the whole business. So. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly base metal mines always need a lot more infrastructure yeah. than, than gold does. Um, you mentioned some uh, new conductors or interpretation of new conductors at Esperance West. Can you tell us a bit more about that? So, you know, we wanted to, we had we had done IP there, but IP is a, a geophysical method that looks for more disseminated mineralization. So we wanted to do a geophysical method that sort of uh, looks for deeper, uh, higher conductive uh, bodies. And so we flew the VLEM survey uh, because it was a cheap, easy method to use, and it, it's very effective for looking for base metals. And we identified a number of uh, conductors along that trend with that thing that had not been identified with the IP uh, and that are untested. And that, that's what we wanted to find. So they're very conductive, they're, they're large, and they have not been tested by our previous drilling. And do you think that they would be more perspective for copper or for gold or for both? For both, because along that trend, as you move to, uh, I think it's the east, it becomes more copper rich, and you move to the west, it's more gold rich. So we have conductors at both ends of it, so we expect to find uh, that same disparity as you move across. One of the one of the issues with an early stage project like this is you want to try not to run before you walk, so to speak. So you don't want to start drilling everywhere until you have um, enough uh, focus targets and information. So for next year, based on, you know, the information you're going to have, what approximate size drill program do you think would be appropriate? I think it'll be similar to this year. It'll be less than 2000 meters. I don't think we'll go crazy yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if we can get between six and 12 holes done next year, and uh, that would be a good thing. So do you think that uh, with next year's program, you might be able to pick an area of focus where you could set up camp and, and start working, or is that still uh, hard to say at this point? Um, at this point, I think it's hard to say. We're hoping the IP Lake will be that, that area. We're quite excited about some of the cross structures there, and the uh, you know that, that trend sits on the contact of an iron formation and uh, volcanics, and this is a, a classic, uh, classic area to find mineralization, sediments, and, and, and volcanics. So, and there's a shear zone that sits, sits on the contacts. We're quite excited about the potential there, along with the boulder and uh, gold and till anomalies. And that, that shear zone has been traced for how, 10, 11 kilometers? Well, seven kilometers, we can definitely see it, but we think it probably goes to well over 10. Great. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I know a lot of companies would be excited to have anywhere near that in a shear zone uh, that you know is mineralized to, to drill at. So that's, uh, that sounds very exciting. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck with that. And um, I think that uh, we don't have any more questions for, from the online participants, so we'll wrap it up there. Thanks again to David Christie from Orford Mining, and uh, we're very happy to have had you here today. Thank you.